Pizza and Biddy in losers' quarters. So, so Toon two Link and Ness. So two children fighting. Yeah, this is not. This is not. Yeah. I mean, for a while we had uh, the Great Gonzalez coming a lot of times, and we basically had an obligatory Ness Ditto in the top eight every week. So we're we're no stranger to little kid fights here. Yeah, Biddy has been going for a lot of grabs today, and this yes. is not something you really like. They'll use obviously the Zair in the air. But right, right. Toon Links don't have a ton of grab combos. Like they just, if they want low percent combos, they'll just up tilt for a while. Other than that, everything's usually off of a bomb conversion or a read. They don't usually need grabs until high percent when they think they need to kill. But because his back throw is the, I believe, second or third strongest in the right. game. Right. But at the same time, if you can get grabs, take the grabs. Oh, absolutely. It's always good damage, and it conditions them to stop shielding so much. So, in the end, that, which you know, that obviously you need to be hit by a good uh, bomb. Right. To get your bomb fair conversions. All right, spacing with Becca there. Ah, rolling the air dodge. And his aim with the Oh, just misses. Good. Just oh. misses. You know, he's... He uh, misses that two more times. He's got SD. <laughs> just the rule it's, there. It's, it's in the rule. Oh, out! Played, wow. ladies and gentlemen. Just a little bit of rage. 120 killing from the middle of the biggest stage in this game, Battlefield. But you know what? Every Ness main loves it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I love having a frame six kill confirm. <laughs> Grab to push back. Love it. Yeah. But it's fun. I love having to do only two inputs. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, so much easier than aerial needles to bouncing fish. Like, what is this joke? Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, Postage is like leaning. He's, uh, he's pulling back a lot. That being said, it might not be the best option against Toon Link because uh, Toon Link can you know play from a distance very, very well. Oh, yeah. So, honestly, the better option might just be to get in his face a lot. And, and, and as you see, the uh, the strong back throw there, but not just not enough to kill yet. And getting it off of the cross-up pivot grab. Absolutely. Just running through the shield. And he does it right back to mm -hmm. him. That's a call-out. Absolutely. You got the range of the tether, the pivot grab just accentuates that. Right. See, I think it might be a better option just to, like, get in Toon Link's face and, you know, get your grabs, get your back throws. And the third one, not going to do it. That move is very stale now. Yes. The next one should do it, but this is what happens when you stale your moves. They don't kill when you need them to kill. And that's Powers. always an issue. I love the option there, but unfortunately he will lose stage control and then immediately get up smash for that. But what he was trying to do was punish the tether. Right. Because not a lot of people, and I'm even including myself here because I pride myself on being a good edge guarder, but uh, a lot of people do not know how to punish tethers correctly. The arc is always the same. You don't get invincibility until you actually grab the ledge. Right. So if you intercept that point, you know, they will usually get gimped if they don't have a good enough upbeat. So I like the option of going for Nair just to try to intercept that, but you know he just got back on stage. So. Yeah, and, and and like you said earlier, it's it's definitely a case of you need to play the you need to play the character, you need to know how to do that yourself to understand how to punish it. Absolutely. Yeah, because I played Zero Suit for a while before uh, before the patches, so mm -hmm. I know about tethers. Right. All right, the trade there. Aerials will always trade, so by going for back air, he ensured that he would trade that move. Oh, I know what he's going for up air. There oh, we go. <laughs> Called wow. it right out. Yeah. That's the other thing Nets loves. Just the random YOLO up air while I land. And it's good yeah. kill. I mean, so Pasta takes game one there. Ness's head is very big. It really is. I mean, I a long time ago when I first started commentary, commentating, um, I had a theory that Ness actually has been taking steroids. Yeah. Just with how strong his baseball bat hits are and his head just getting perfectly right, progressively right. larger. It's uh, the, the episode of The Simpsons where uh, Ken <laughs> Griffey Jr. is bring, drinking the brain tonic and then his head just <laughs> swells up and swells up and swells up. Yeah. I mean, Barry Bonds, of course, you know, second place all time in head circumference only to Mr. Met. But <laughs> <laughs> just for more random baseball humor here. But so we're on Duck Hunt. Uh -huh. And look at all this green. They both decided to pick green colors and just trying to blend in with the environment. I see what you're doing. Get behind that bush. It'll work. I've seen Pasta clutch out a lot of games here, though. That being said, taking uh, a Ness player to Duck Hunt is always a great option because this stage has no Z-axis. And True. Ness, a big reason why his air dodge is so hard to punish is because after his intangibility frames, he's in the Z-axis, so it's still very difficult to hit. Certain moves will hit the Z-axis, but... A lot of them just don't. That's why, even if you read the air dodge perfectly, you still might not punish Ness. But here, it's a lot easier. That and Duck Hunt is generally a camper's paradise. So oh yeah. Anyone with a lot of projectile game can just retreat and just fire away. But not at the moment because Biddy is uh, down in percent. So. Ooh, I like the uh, up tilt up air conversion there. Hey, and it's the, the Biddy special, setup. the bomb fair. Up smash, not gonna do it yet. All these bombs coming out. 
Oh, and he, uh, he whiffs on the Nair. Right, shield looking a bit small, though. Up smash, not going to do it yet. Again, staling. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure where, where any of that was running, going. Yeah. I mean, you know, running in the neutral is always good. Back throw out. Played. 100%, not even at the ledge. Let's go. <laughs> the boomerang coming back to get a little bit of da extra damage on that grab. Yeah, you see a lot of uh, characters that have mobile items do that. Like, you'll see Bowser Jr.'s, like, have their mecha coop out and hit that at the end. Yeah. That's a, that's a tweak specialty. Anyway, up smash will do that. You know, your moves are unstaled the instant you lose a stock. So. Right. Oh, that would have killed anyway, but So last there. stock, 0%. Well, not necessarily last stock, but if uh, it is last stock for Biddy. Plastic can pull this out. Yep. Down throw up there. The oh dog! No. The dog altered! Man's the best dog friend. Altered where Pasta had to position the. That was. Oh my god. He had to position. Wait a minute. Flashback to Xanadu a little while ago. <laughs> Blazing Pasta had to play against uh, Teki, the Greninja player, where he anticipated a Hydro Pump. Um, you know, pushing him off, and right. what did he do? He just kind of waited and had his PK Thunder just go and hit him anyway. Paz is just a master of waiting out PK Thunders and hitting people with it. And against Greninja, he's coming the new Gonzalez. Against Greninja, <laughs> it's twice as strong because it's PK Thunder. True enough.